Hello and welcome to today's video. So this time, finally, I'm able to get some of my acrylicked up vintage Star Wars collectibles out onto a brand new display case, which I've had built for me. And I'm really, really looking forward to it. Okay, so what I've done now, um, apart from the two which are on display already, I've pulled out all my carded figures that I've got around to putting in GW acrylic cases, and I've sorted them into size. So the absolute thickest figures are these sort of tri-logo ones here. So we've got the A-wing, and we've got um, uh, Boba Fett, Anakin, Princess Leia. So those ones there are going to be good to have as bases alongside these ones here. So these are also on the whole Trilogo ones, but they've got very deep bubbles. Um, so these cases are quite large, so they've got much more space, you know, as you would expect, something like hand carbonite or a man -a man probably the biggest bubble of them all. So if you can imagine the man -a man with a thinner figure on top, that should work out absolutely fine. Hello and welcome to this second video looking at vintage Star Wars action figures. So today we're gonna to be looking at the Empire Strikes Back figures. Now this is Han Solo in his Hoth outfit. So, this is the first of the major characters to get re-released for Empire. Um, once again, super designed figure, loads of detail in it. Um, great little figure. Often you see these worn, uh, that the like, wear on the hands and the arms uh, where the paint's rubbed off, but generally it turns up in quite nice nick, this one. So that's uh, Han Hoth. Okay. Now the next one we have is another Bounty Hunter, which is IG-88, which I believe, along with EV-99 later on, is the tallest figure in the range. Um, you don't get a lot of plastic, but he does come with two guns, so he's got that long light rifle there, and also the standard Stormtrooper gun. Um, there's lots and lots of variations of this figure, but I've only got the one because, uh, you know, um, who's, got, who's got time to collect all these, but they are lots of um, the different variations on the eyes as well. So a nice figure, super detailed, super popular, because once again, he's one of the bounty hunters and uh, recommended figure to find. So that is IG-88, a nice little figure, that one. Doesn't hold his gun very well, unfortunately, but there you go. So that's IG-88. Now the next one is, you could say, almost as iconic as the original Stormtrooper, but these were the ones designed just for Hoth. So these are the um, Imperial Stormtrooper, but with Hoth battle gear. So like their snow gear on, which is basically the change in the mask. And also they have this half cape, half a plastic cape going on them. Now that cape is often missing on these. I mean, it only hooks on around the little sides there. Um, these are actually quite difficult to find in really nice uh, mint conditions, so you might have to look a little bit. If you can see there, and let's see, this one's got a little bit of wear on his leg there, but um, unless you're pulling one straight off a card, you're going to have to wait a while to get a really, really nice mint one. But a great looking iconic figure and uh, certainly uh, one of my favourites for the Empire Strikes Back. This is one of my all-time favourite figures, and that's 2-1-B. Now, he was the uh, the medical droid, if it is indeed a he, if the medical droid, and um, uh, seen at the end of uh, The Empire Strikes Back, um, and also when Luke is in the, uh, the back to tank. Um, yeah, absolutely great figure, this. Um, very unusual, and I think they really captured the design perfectly. Um, he comes with one accessory, which is like this little like probe thing here. Um, and I seem to remember the, uh, yeah, so that bit comes out of his mouth there. I'm not quite sure why, um, but there we are. Yeah, great figure that, it's certainly unusual. Um, yeah, I guess the main thing is, you know, make sure he's got his weapon and that this bit of plastic is all intact there. But he's uh, a pretty straightforward figure to get that one. And once again, very popular with like the uh, the, the focus collectors who just uh, focus on the one, one figure. But that's 2-1-B. So back in 1992, myself and my business partner, George, ran a collector's shop in Plymouth called Purple Haze. It's uh, quite well remembered. We sold comics, books, videos, DVDs, 
um, trading cards and also Star Wars action figures. Um, I used to have my complete collection at the time in a display case on display in, in the shop and people would come in and spend hours just looking at it, working out which ones they needed. We also sold figures in the store. Um, generally they were just like 75p back in 1992 because back then you could still find, literally carry a bag loads of um, vintage figures at boot sales and at, um, at flea markets and things like that. Even at the toy fairs they were cheap. Um, boy how times have changed but back then you know to do a bit of a, a collector's guide um i wrote and published one called the purple haze guide to collecting star wars action figures and uh, i believe this uh, is probably one of the very first price guides ever put together uh for star wars action figures who'd have thought that nigh on over 20 years later i'd still be uh, still be talking about them on youtube of all things so here we are, this is the, the first figure from the range. This is R2-D2, the original version. Um, there were revisions that came out of this figure for Empire and Jedi. Um, this one's not in too bad condition. Um, the thing to look out for with this is uh, that the head still clicks, which means the mechanism is okay. This one's not too bad at all. Um, great little figure, a classic. Pretty tough to find this one these days, particularly with nice uh, Nice transfers, so uh, yeah, that's R2-D2. Now, the next figure we're going to have a look at is uh, Ben Kenobi. Now, Ben is uh, got the lightsaber there, um, comes with a plastic cape. This version um, has got grey hair. Uh, this is a grey hair version. And I do also have um, a version of Ben with uh, with white hair. So this is just one of the many, many variations. Um, uh, you know, things to look out for is like wear around the edge by the arms here um, on this cape. It is only plastic, um, so it's easily broken if the figure's been in and out of the cape. Um, you know, wear on the eyebrows. You see a tiny, tiny bit of wear there on um, Ben Kenobi, but generally this one's in, in really nice shape and uh, quite a nice example. Okay. Uh, next one, a pretty easy one this to get, which is a Chewbacca, very, very common figure, hardly um, changed at all over the three movies. So although there are people who, you know, collect various variations of this, to be honest, talking about variation, I don't really go crazy for them simply because there's there's so many. You could just carry on forever. I just, you know, the very main ones are to I'll pick up, but I'm not overly mad with variations simply because you could just go on forever and uh, I collect too many other things, but Chewbacca, a nice simple figure to pick up. Look for wear on the bandolier strap here because that's something that often would get, get worn out. So look out for that, but quite an easy figure to get that one. Uh, next one, of course, is Mr. Darth Vader. So Darth, nice, once again, very common figure. Didn't change at all uh, throughout the run of, of the vintage figures. Just make sure he's got a nice, uh, uh, a nice cape on it. Um, there was a time when these were so common there were boxed ones floating around in like little clipper boxes, which were like a mail order company in Europe. And um, you could pick them up for like 152 pound, brand new out of a bag. So this is one of those that's just been uh, been opened. So nice, easy one to get Darth Vader. Uh, now, next one is probably my all time, one of my all time favorite figures. And that's the, uh, the Death Squad Commander. Now, this chat is brilliant, brilliant figure. I absolutely loved him. You see these uh, going around the Death Star in the movie. Basically a sophisticated stormtrooper. I really like these. Um, this was the original Han Solo. Now this is a tough figure to find in Nice Nick. Um, this isn't a bad example. The limbs are really stiff. The paint's not too bad. Although as is usual, there's a little bit of wear on the, on the top of the hairline there. That is pretty common with this one. Um, Han Solo gun, standard Han Solo gun there. Um, with regards weapons, um, one thing I've noticed, and, it, and it's absolutely shocking really, is the amount of reproduction weapons on the market. Now, I know all mine are um, original because most of these are my original figures from uh, 40 years ago. Hello and welcome to today's video. So this time we're going to be taking a look through all three of the Ralph Macquarie art portfolio. So uh, one of these came out for all three of the original movies and they're absolutely glorious. If you've never seen these, then I think you're going to absolutely love them. So sit back, relax, and let's get to it. Um, my 
three have all been signed by Ralph Macquarie. I was very lucky to meet him at one of the uh, NEC memorabilia affairs back in the 90s. He was there with his son and um, although I never got a, a photo of him even signing them or a photo with him, um, I did get a few bits and pieces signed including all three um, portfolios. So I'm very very pleased that I did that because I've always been a massive fan of his uh, of his production paintings. Here is the, the Star Wars portfolio then and I'm based in the UK and these were sold around the world including in the in the UK. Let's just get that right up above it and uh, we'll just have a little zip through here and see what you think. So each print is on uh, like quite hard sort of stock paper so you could even put them up and uh, you could you could frame your most uh, favorite ones here and you certainly see how Macquarie's concept pages became reality and they don't just you know reprint those they do have a little um a little paragraph here about what it is on the fourth moon of yavin princess leon as those who saved the rebel alliance with an impressive ceremony here macquarie developed what was known as the lash larue scene in the depths of the death star And you can almost see these in the movie now, literally like shot for shot, can't you? Moss Eisley there. Like that one on the cover there of Cloud City, that is absolutely amazing. But uh, certainly uh, a little bit more expensive if you wanted to get some of these framed up. Um, and it does make it susceptible to creasing around the size just because of its sheer sort of wobbliness. Um, so you can see mine is certainly not, not mint or anything on the back. There's definite signs of stress. And I do remember vividly being extremely worried, carting them all the way to Birmingham around a toy fair to get uh, Rolf to sign them. But obviously I am very pleased that I did, but I, you know, at what cost? <laughs> um, they did get a little bit creased. So here they all are again. And I'm sure you've seen some of these um, these pictures before, but even so, when they're this big, they're just magnificent, aren't they? The look on his Taunton, Imperial base. And obviously now we know what R2 and C3PO look like. So Macquarie was able to just do a better job um, on his illustrations. Absolutely love the, the probe droid. What, a, what an imagination, eh? Fantastic stuff. Luke uh, recovering in the back to tank there with 2-1-B. Superb, aren't they? Really, really superb. Some of these you don't see so often. As I film, this Empire uh, is celebrating the 40th anniversary. It's the Iron Cannon. Another great shot that isn't it? It's so detailed. Fantastic stuff that. The Atats and the Snow Speeders, another such an exciting scene, seeing that for the first time. Just incredible. That's another shot there. The snow speeders changed slightly, didn't they? They went sort of a bit flatter than the ones pictured here, but the Atats are quite similar to what ended up on screen. Taunt on there slightly uh, slightly changed. Another really, really great scene, the Atat. Approaching Luke after his uh, snow speeder crashed. And these would look so good framed up. You know, maybe you get four or five done in a frame. It's just fantastic. So this time we've got out perhaps my biggest Star Wars item, at least that I can think of, and that is the original um, Imperial Shuttle. I mean, Blimenek, what an iconic, iconic piece. Now, I've had this one since uh, the early 90s. And to be honest, it's not in the greatest of shape. Um, the actual ship itself is okay, but the box certainly um, uh, needs a bit of a clean. On the main picture there, it's actually looking pretty good. There's a little bit of sticker wear that, but um, I mean, I could put a little bit of Pritt stick on that and I'll glue that bit down. Um, 
where you start to see like signs is sort of that um, that split there in the box and I am very much considering whether it's worth putting some sort of tape inside just to straighten it out a little bit potentially um, if you look on this side here so you can see the original sort of tape down the bottom here has come off or is it's so old and yellow that it's come off you can see on the top here this yellow line here it was there to begin with and it's just sort of fallen to bits along the very top you can see this had tape which is gone and you can see this is really dusty and it needs look at the dust there and that needs a really good wiping off this side isn't too bad I mean that the artwork side there's a couple of these it's almost like bullet holes where something has ended up there's another one there something has ended up pushing into the side of the box and once again I don't think I can do a lot about that so here's the ship itself now it's all in, in pieces so um, it has had stickers applied there's the sort of the, the dome the cockpit area there there's the uh, the fin that goes in in the top and you'll see that it's not bad but it has got like a little bit of yellowing and aging and nothing that won't um, I, I, technically I could wash it but I'm thinking I might just pop the old polish on and just give it a bit of a polish um, thankfully it has still got its uh, instructions this is the uh, European version so not the Kenner so we can see how to how to put it together so even he's smiling <laughs> which is quite cool and uh, the actual ship itself well, it's, it, it really is okay to be honest um, it's just sort of little touches of uh, sort of yellowing and aging here and there which you know it'll be absolutely fine once I've um, sort of run the old uh, duster over it so as I said I'm not going to do a major restoration or anything on this because it just doesn't need it the box however it really does need a bit of a clean up so initially all I'm going to do is take all the little little pieces and uh, run my toothbrush over it and this will just lift off any uh, any bits of dust and dirt that's gone into sort of any of the, the crevices which the Star Wars ships are famous for aren't they let's be honest um, I could do this under sort of warm soapy water but this one isn't actually dirty like that there's a few little stains which I'm going to get off with some polish but that's about it um, I wouldn't say this one looked bad at all to be honest and all this is doing is just taking off any sort of dust that may have built up and it's a really good way it's a really good way of cleaning your figures as well if you want to um, I would imagine this was assembled there we are so, so you see sort of in that bit there I'm going to need to get the old uh, cleaner in there but I'll dust it out first so if I was a kid and I had this one assembled I'd never ever want to put it back in the box to be honest you know because it's such a cool looking ship isn't it you know so maybe this one the original owner back in the day he had his um, on display as well quite possibly and it's never been uh, and it wasn't put away until he decided to uh, to get a shot of it these little ridges along the top there so those to be honest this is where it's actually the worst is just in these and that's because it's an easy spot to catch dust and dirt isn't it but also it's an easy fix if you've got got a toothbrush an old toothbrush lying around and i use this to do uh clean books as well so i'm just going to use my soft cloth here and a bit of mr sheen and I'm going to take this first panel here and just give it a bit of a tart up basically um, as I said I'm not going to wash this one all the way through but any sort of little bits and pieces on it this should really uh, pick it up because um, it's not mint but it is at least in its box it was quite funny because it had um, the original price which was 50 pounds this is a Woolworths in Woolworths it was it was 50 pound for the original price and then that had been half that had been scrubbed out and it was 25 pounds so reduced from 50 to 25 and then reduced again 
to £12.50. And that is when uh, this, this kid got it. So, um, and he'd had it from, from new, basically. And uh, I said, oh, mate, I've been after one of these for a long, long time. And I forget exactly what I gave him, but, it, you know, this is the 90s we were talking about. And although this was sort of a known collectible, don't get me wrong, it was one of those ones that was a bit of a holy grail for a lot of collectors because it was such an iconic piece. Um, I didn't really give it much for it. Probably, I mean, I honestly don't remember, but it probably wasn't much more than about... 20 30 quid at the time you know i mean the, the young 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 kid was really happy i was happy just to get it and just seeing if this pops out there we are i was really happy to get it and uh you know that was it that was what it was like back then that was that was the 90s you know i always remember the days of people coming into the store and uh you got to remember that this was at the time when we first opened especially it was a bit different when we shut, you know, eight to ten years later, but at the time, uh, when we first opened, we used to sell loose Star Wars figures across the board at 75p each. There was no price guides to think to speak of, per se. Um, so that's how much Star Wars figures cost secondhand back then. And you could literally go to boot sales, or what we would call jumble sales, and... Um, pick them up by the bag load. Now, once the youngsters found out that we were buying secondhand Star Wars figures, and they obviously, a lot of the, these kids grew up with them and had bag loads and bag loads of them, people would bring them into the shop and we'd buy, buy a, a carrier bag full of Star Wars figures for like tenner, something like that. Got your weapons? Yeah, brilliant, you know. We'd often pick up ships or chew back a bandolier belts just full of weapons. I mean, <laughs> Just incredible. But it was at that sort of time, I'd already started collecting Star Wars for myself. So I just put together a, like a run of, you know, all the loose ones. And uh, then I started pulling the, the card ones together. And then you know, I already had some anyway. And back then you could still find them. They were around. They had toy shows. A lot of people just didn't even want to... A lot of dealers didn't touch Star Wars because it was just everywhere, you know. So um, that was... That was the time to be collecting it and the time if you were a dealer to be uh that was the time to be picking it up you know when it was cheap and cheerful because those days didn't last very long and uh star wars became you know perhaps the hottest sort of property around which it is today you know it's got to be classed as the crown jewel of um collectibles now i'm not sure how easy it's going to be to see but along these sorts of grooves along here you can sort of see where it's sort of dusty and spotty now what i'm going to do i'm going to go over the whole thing with my toothbrush first of all like this and i'm going to try and dig out what this will do it will just dislodge that that dust and dirt that's pretty much cleaned and it is already looking much, much better. There's only a couple of little like, little yellow sort of hot spots where uh, it hasn't quite come up. So I'm just going to put it together and uh, we'll have one last look at it in, uh, in its complete and clean form. The iconic vintage place. I mean, it really is fantastic in every way, isn't it? Just superb. I've had to pull all the way out just to get it in. Um, but it really is fantastic. If I sort of angle it around a little bit here. I mean, imagine having that one if you were a youngster, right? I mean, it would just be uh, fantastic, wouldn't it? To have had one of them in your collection. Hello and welcome to this special unboxing video. So today we're going to have a look at my original ATAP from back in uh, 1983. Um, I think this ship is so epic. Um, well, it warranted its own video, really. So I'm really looking forward. I have no idea what sort of nick it's in inside, how complete it is, but um, hopefully uh, we'll have some fun finding out. So without further ado, let's get to it. So um, this top bit here is for the, uh, the canopy. So you put your... Put your Right, that driver in there, like that. Get your side bits, these were often missing. I'm just glad they're both here, to be honest. 
Well, there's a carbon in it and an end and instructions. Wow, I didn't know it looks like it's complete. So here's the uh, original instruction sheet. 1984. I guess there's not actually a lot to assemble with this ship. Um, the little cockpit bits, the wings, the gun maybe. Let's hope it's all there, eh? So, if we take off the, uh, the cardboard ends, like so. Try and get these in picture if I can. There we are. Well, like a lot of my older toys, it has got, it's got a little bit of sort of like aging, like not mold, but just some sort of like aging. So this bit obviously goes on here, doesn't it? Like so. Let's pop that bit on. Is that gonna easily slip on? I don't wanna force anything at this stage in the game. Don't want to force it. Let's just have a look at the rest of it, shall we? So, what a great ship this was, isn't it? Absolutely fantastic.